Hey guys, welcome back to Smith Shearer YouTube channel. As you guys know, the 36 blew up the other day. You ain't gonna get nowhere if you keep crying about it. So a couple days later, I found a good 36 from an Atlas. So we're actually gonna be upgrading. You can see it back there in the back of the truck. It looked like a good motor. It took the valve cover off, took the oil filter off. Everything looked good inside, so I think we're in a good starting position. We have the forge crank now. So I have a couple things in progress right now. And yeah, it took a couple hour drive up to the Poconos. Now we got ourselves a nice new motor. This thing's gonna be back together, I'd say within a week, week and a half of hucking a rod. If you missed that video, go back and check it out. But for now guys, I'll see you when we get back home. This apparently had a bad rocker and the guy uh, swapped the rocker over and seemed to be all good. So I wanted to just do a, a quick compression test. So all you do with this is you just throw it up on a stand, put the positive on the starter, ground on the starter, and then you just jump from here to the signal and make sure you got a flywheel in. It's easy enough. So we uh, got good compression all over. This is a, remember, this is just a cold motor. We know this is a good, healthy motor. There are a few differences. Right now I'm just taking stuff apart with the old head. The head's junk. Uh, we just we looked that over in the last episode. It's junk. So we have to uh, get different manifolds and hopefully I can just use the same Y pipe up and out. And comparing these ports to my, uh, the old 36, the BLV, these are actually like an eighth inch to a quarter inch taller all the way around. So these are, this is like getting an OEM big ported head. I'll just show you guys an overview in this video. This is going to try to be just getting the whole motor together and then getting it back in the car. We're just checking over some issues and differences. Obviously with the uh, injectors and stuff, I'm going to try to leave these in as blanks. So that's going to be some fabrication, having to make stuff stay in here. But that's the idea is to just leave these as blanks because we have injectors coming in up top. So hopefully we'll be able to use all this stuff and be okay. This has a coolant pressure sensor in the head. Uh, it's busted, so I will have to order a new one of those. Also, the crank sensor is totally different. It no longer has that long cable end like all the older ones. Uh, this is now directly bolted in, kind of like a 2OT. Oh, one other big difference is on the back of the block here, it does not have the oil pressure relief valve port. So you can see it's just totally cast right here. Whereas over here, you could physically take it out and uh, adjust the pumps. I don't know what this pump's gonna look like. It's probably gonna be different. And then another uh, difference is this oil filter housing. So you would have to make a totally custom bracket for your, if you're using it in like a Mark II, Mark III setup, you would have to make a totally different bracket because of this, or you revert back to the older style, which I have a video on that, or you go to the uh, billet aluminum versions, which Ibed, VR6 Society, they have those, or Schimmel, there's a couple people that make them, and then they just bolt right on and uh, you'll have plenty of clearance. So I'm just reusing mine. I have a billet oil filter housing that has a spin on, so that'll be going on in its place. For some reason, these later model water pumps have this little vacuum nipple, so I guess it's to allow more or less coolant flow depending upon conditions. My water pump was new in my BLV, so I'm just gonna take that put it in here we're gonna start stripping the down the motor down more taking off what we don't need we don't need this fuel pump we don't need this valve cover and then we don't need the cam so we got to take the cams out we got to retime it put all of our new timing chain stuff on it and uh the biggest thing we got to do is take all the valve springs out of this head and put them into this head so we can run our big cams so a lot to do in this video to get this motor ready i'll see you guys in a little bit
Right now we're at the point where we can start getting ready to do the valve springs. And in these heads, it's kind of tough simply because of the tooling. So a normal uh, compression tester is M14. So then you have to have a, an adapter that goes down to an M12. So in order for this to work, you have to take out the Schrader valve. Usually goes right into the end right here. And that's what keeps the pressure from coming back out. But when you're doing this type of a job, you need constant pressure in there. So how we're doing it is I'm taking my compression tester and I'm just not having the other side of it to a compression tester. I'm having it directly to my airline and shop air. And I have it regulated to 90 PSI at my regulator. When you put this adapter on, make sure you put Loctite on because I uh, had an issue before where these come apart and it's insanely hard to get that little piece out once it What you will need is an overhead valve spring compressor tool. This is just a cheap one on Amazon, stuff like that. Uh, you just get this kind of assortment. It comes with a bunch of random odds and ends. So the idea of it is you just have leverage and you pull back here. It'll compress down on the spring, pull the keepers out, pull the springs out, pull the retainers out and then swap everything over to the uh, new valve springs, which are right here. This is a full SuperTech kit. So this is a R32 24 valve kit. They do have a metal washer. This goes at the bottom of the valve seat. You have higher seat pressure now, and uh, this can eat into the head. That avoids that, so that's gonna be the setup. I'll record me doing one to show you guys, and then after that, we're just gonna time lapse it because there is a ton, a ton of setting up. Like right now, I'll just be able to do all these front ones. And then I got to reset for all of those ones. Then I got to reset for all of these ones. I got to reset for all of these ones. It's really annoying. If it was a 12 valve, I'd be done this in about 25 minutes. So now we're set up to TDC. We're going to be doing one and six at the same time. The pistons will be all the way at the top at one and six. This is the one I'm starting on. Take the adapter throw it in if you are not on tdc on a cylinder it will kick the engine over you'll hear it you'll see it so your best option is to like get a either a long screwdriver or a long welding wire and have it in the cylinder turn the engine and then you'll see when you're at a tdc in that specific cylinder nope good to go locked in this air pressure is going to be when I push down this cylinder, these valves are going to stay up. That's the point of doing air pressure on the underside of it. Use your leverage. See, I'm pushing back. There's one keeper. There's two keepers. And now I'm letting it up. That spring and retainer is off. See, got the two keepers here. Don't lose them. If you drop them in the engine, you'll have a real bad time. Let's get this stock junk out. Take this valve seat, valve spring seat. One thing I like to do is put the keepers in the valve retainer. That way it's less finicky. You just got to make sure you're not messing it up. Spring seat. It's all the way down. There's one done. I mean, there's really nothing to it. You just gotta have patience. Be safe, don't let anything fall down in the motor. My motor's apart right now, so it's not that big of a deal. I'm gonna throw you guys on time lapse, and then we'll get all the rest of these done. We got the top end all done and then I just decided let's just go do the uh, bottom end with new rod bearings. Uh, king, we got King rod bearings and ARP rod bolts. All the uh, OEM coated bearings look great so there's no issue there. Uh, one thing I always tell people to do is do two at a time. That way you can rotate the engine and make sure everything moves nice and free. So you can see this engine's nice free moving. I rotate it after every single piston and uh, it's good to go. We just gotta put everything back together now on this bottom end, then we can flip it over, start
start doing the cam stuff. So getting close to having this motor done. been a huge headache with all these subtle differences the biggest one being i'm trying to retain these stock injectors as plugs so you can see i've just been hacking up the uh, stock fuel rails the lower fuel rail is the biggest issue because this wasn't made this intake manifold was not made with this in mind at all so these are like the spacers so i just cut them off i'm hoping for the best um i'm just trying to make it work at this point so i'm not really recording that much uh, i just got done i tack weld all the flywheel bolts and these are to 85 foot pounds with a ton of red loctite i'm trying to get this as far along today so i can get it in the car and have one complete video for you guys just know that i'm struggling uh, another big issue was that with the uh, cam gears I think it, it, it might be a combination of like these rockers are totally different from the old rockers. Here's the new Atlas rocker. Here's the old Passat rocker. You can see this is way bigger. So I'm th I was thinking that like I was turning the motor over with the cams degreed and the springs were like binding and popping. Since that was happening, it, it was driving me nuts. I just wound up taking the cam gears off and I put the stock gears back on. And um, I do have the wiring to run intake VVT. So maybe one day I can explore that option, but just know that I was having a, a big issue with these gears and these style rockers. I don't have all of these rockers because they all exploded in the old head. So it does seem like these ones are a much better rocker. They're much smaller, but uh, these ones, I assume, assume they're a bit more robust, but you can see this one was blowed out. You can see the bearings just moving in and out. So that one was done. I had to go get a new one. It's just been a bunch of that type of stuff. I'll see you guys when all this stuff's on and we're about to bolt the trans to it, okay? So just, you're skipping ahead. Here's the motor all together. These exhaust manifolds are technically different. They're a bit taller. But um, luckily, they have the exact same placement. So if you have an older generation 3.6 and then you go up to the newer generation with the big ports, you still use your exhaust. I don't think there's anything else. I got all the mounts on. Everything's ready to roll. It's even full of oil. So I just got to get it in there. One thing that's holding me up is this stupid thing. There is a port here. I don't know what it goes to. I'm assuming it's coolant. But I just got one of those cheap expansion plugs. Hopefully it holds for now. I hopefully nobody will be around it if it does pop out because that'll be pretty bad i'm gonna see if i have some actual freeze plugs later but i just need to get this in the car get it ready it needs to go racing this week sorry guys there's a ton of time lapse in this i'm just i'm trying to knock stuff out uh here's a final look of the stock injectors being used as plugs so there's an injector there's an injector there's an injector see i had to lock this off so my fuel pressure gauge hangs out and then I chopped it off as far as I could up here just so I could get to some nuts because I got three nuts up there and then down bottom right here I did use this to retain that remember I cut a, a decent chunk off so this is like acting as a press on and then it's also uh, you can't see it really but up in there it's also holding the injectors in place I did have to swap the bolts out for some 13 mil and use a wrench but it's on there, shouldn't be an issue. Everything's seemingly in order, so I'm just gonna time lapse, get this thing in. We need to get this running. I'm gonna try my best to have this running today. One other thing we do have to do is the crank sensor is different. I might just butt connect it for now because I did order a new pin and plug and I'll have that stuff in the description, but it hasn't come in yet. This is what uh, came with the motor, it was cut, so I'll just 
put this on for now just so I can uh, get it going. Hopefully the next time I talk to you, we'll be getting oil pressure, setting up this crank sensor, setting the cam sensor, trying to fire it up. We're gonna try the first start here. 